Am I? Am I? I did turn it on. Am I coming through? Can you tell if I'm coming? I can hear it. I can hear it. I, I'm coming through. Okay. Mute me. Enter the gates today. We are at the, the threshold. We are right there at the gateway. We are coming into the city. This is Palm Sunday. And the people we'll talk about later who were celebrating that the Savior had come. And so we celebrate that. That justice would finally be brought into the world in a definitive way through the Messiah. And so if you know the song, if I know you know this song. If you were ever connected to Ummies and Jummies in the years we did that in the youth movement in the United Methodist Church here in Minnesota, we sang this every time we gathered, usually more than once or twice or three times, where justice rolls down. And you can even put in the hand motions if you want. My hands will be busy. Before we begin our act of worship, I have some announcements just to remind ourselves of. Our administrator, Jody Martin, has done a great job. These are on the information booth. They're there in a little card holder. They're a great way to invite friends or family or folk you know to the rest of our Holy Week experiences, especially on Easter. Come on Easter Sunday. You feel free to take a handful of these and take them with you, hand them out to the folks at your job or your neighbors or family. A wonderful way to get them here for what is to be a wonderful celebration for Easter. Of course, on Easter, we always have our, 
our lilies, and you have the opportunity. The form is in the bulletin. If you want to make a donation to sponsor one of the flowers in, in honor of or in celebration of or in memory of, you certainly may. But there's also the opportunity if you want to give a gift to the church, the general fund, and it also can be done in uh, memory of or in celebration or in honor of. And many have asked, can I do both? Hmm. Yes, you can do both. We will certainly appreciate that. Um, what a wonderful way to celebrate and honor our loved ones. I need to remind you that this is the last day for Second Harvest Collection. That's our mission in March. And in March, everything that's given is matched. That's why we use March as our Second Harvest mission. Uh, the foundation makes a match to every gift that is given to them. So this is the last Sunday for that. There's other announcements that are in, on the back of the bulletin. Today, our youth are serving us, I think you can smell them. The cinnamon rolls are ready to be back there. Um, and you can certainly have those uh, following, following our time of worship. But we have a special announcement. Do, do, I, I wish I had one of those things. Do, 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 do. This just in. Do, 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 do. <laughs> well, hello, everyone. So, <laughs> this is a hint. That's what that is. Okay, so um, I want to announce the first annual Grand Rapids United Methodist Church outdoor plant sale and when I when I say Grand Rapids United Methodist Church that's because it's not the Miss Mary plant sale <laughs> and I have a tiny house so I'm hoping other people will start plants in their home that we can sell on May 29th it's a Wednesday and hopefully every uh, fourth Wednesday in May every year we will continue to do it uh, you don't have to search the internet for ideas on how to start plants or when to do it. We have a printout, a yellow sheet of paper that's available on the back table in the fellowship hall that you can take with you today to give you some inspiration. Otherwise, you're welcome to search the internet. I found lots of suggestions. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money. I bought this bag of seed starting soil for a few dollars at Walmart yesterday. If you don't like messy dirt in your house, they also sell these super growing pellets for like $4 a box of 72. You don't have to buy pots because we all have recycled containers at home. This is my French onion dip, which I consumed <laughs> for a good cause. So you put a couple of inches of soil or seed soil in the pot or container or your yogurt container, your pudding container. Um, put your seed in at the depth that the packet tells you. Uh, mist it with some water and then um, cover it until it germinates. If you don't know what germinate means, I looked it up. <laughs> it says when the plant pokes out of the dirt. Then you uncover it and keep it in, always keep it in a warm place, but once it is germinated and you uncover it, then the optimal thing is for it to have about 12 hours of light a day. If you have a sunny window that you could put some plants in, just make sure it doesn't have a cool breeze. Um, egg cartons like these work really well for um, starting seeds, otherwise bigger containers, or this is my yogurt container and be sure and label it. Don't just think, oh, I'm going to remember that those are sweet pepper seeds. Label it with something. I have um, sticks in the back, popsicle sticks in bunches of 24. If you want to pick up a pack and use it for labeling your seeds before they grow. These are paint sticks that work well in the bigger plants. I'm hoping that some of you might have perennials in your yards, uh, rhubarb or flower perennials that need to be split and you would be willing to split those and put them into an ice cream pail, a coffee can, what have you, and to bring it to the sale, we can sell those. 
Um, if you're not interested in planting things, you can do digging up things. So in your uh, tree line, you might have some baby seedlings, little pine trees that are either going to get taken over by the big trees or mowed down by your lawnmower. If you dig those up, we can sell those baby trees um, on May 29th. Also, if you're cleaning your garage out this spring or your garden shed and you have tools that you're never going to use, a garden hose you're never going to use, those things can be sold at our outdoor plant sale on May 29th. Um, things you can use for labeling, you can use everything from these knives, these plastic knives that come in those sets of plasticware that we always have 5,000 plastic knives left over. You can take a permanent marker. If you don't own a permanent marker, at the table back there I have permanent markers. I have sticks, everything you can think of. Um, also, some of you are wood craftsmen and I would love it if you could create planters or um, bird houses, bird feeders, something like that that we can also sell at the sale. So keep thinking of ideas. My phone number is on the bottom of this yellow piece of paper. So if you want to call me and ask me for ideas or tell me your ideas, that's wonderful. So that's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to gather. All right. Well, that's great. One more. So you're the Mary we ask, how does your garden grow? Yes, oh, there Miss you go. Mary. Miss Mary, how does your garden grow? That's very good. <laughs> I'm so excited about this idea. Um, when Mary came to me and she said, let's, let's sell plants, I'm like, uh, sure, that's great. But the vision is so much larger. And it's a great way to participate as a, a congregation. If, you have, if you're a, a green thumb, by all means, bring those plants and get those started. But I'm not so a green thumb. But I have lawn stuff I'm not going to use anymore. And uh, there's just all sorts of ways she mentioned that you can bring some of the material and we can have quite the outdoor garden rummage sale on the 29th. Thank you, Mary, for that idea and for leading it for us. At this time, I invite us to prepare for Christ not just entering the city, but Christ entering our hearts, Christ entering this room, Christ entering this moment as we celebrate the coming of the king, and we begin that with the prelude. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. <laughs> we come together waving palms of joy. We come to the time of celebration, waving branches of peace. 
The Lord enters the gates of the city and our hearts. The stone that the builders rejected. And the oh, give thanks for the Lord, for God is good. God's love endures forever. Hosanna to the King. With righteous hand, we join in the festival procession. We lift up your name in hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord our God. Hallelujah. Amen. Be seated. invite you to stand and we'll share our opening hymn and all those uh, children at heart and children who wish and want can follow me. We're going to parade about while we're singing this wonderful hymn and be the procession that we name on this special day. Let us sing our opening hymn.
you. Good job. Good job. You did that very well. I invite us to be seated as we share in the prayer of confession. Thank you. That was good. <laughs> We sing our hosannas. We proclaim our allegiance and obedience to you. Yep, our lips are full of your praise. But our minds readily reflect what our lips say. God's great love has been poured out for us. But we have ignored it, questioned it, refused it. We choose to drink from brackish fountains. Water is of materialism, selfishness, position. Instead of the fountains of love and life, forgive us our selfishness, our disobedience, our rebellion. Help us embrace you in your ways that bless and give life. We ask, we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Hear then these words of the assurance of God's love and of God's forgiveness and of God's pardon in our lives. This Jesus who comes on a donkey, this Jesus who walks into the gates of the seat of power itself to bring forth a kingdom that finds its foundation in love and justice and is expressed on a cross and an empty tomb. It is in the name of this Jesus who we claim to be Christ of our lives, that you and I and each and all are forgiven. There's only one person I think in here who doesn't know what these flowers and who these flowers are for. Here she is. <laughs> it is celebrate the Clergy Spouse Sunday. And so, these are for the clergy spouse <laughs> that the clergy got hurt. <laughs> oh, stay there. You'll get them later. Because following the service, there is a card shower for her. And she walked right by it. It said, cards for Sunday. It didn't say cards for Jodell. That'd kind of give it away. So he said, cards for Sunday. And the, that basket's out there. If you didn't have a chance to give, give that card in the basket, you can certainly give it to her while we're enjoying cinnamon rolls. Jodell, I love you. I appreciate you even more than these folk do. And I'll share even more about that the Sunday of our 40th anniversary in two months. So, so there you go. Besides that, welcome, welcome to worship here at the United Methodist Church in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. It is good to gather as the family of God. If this is your first Sunday with us, we especially celebrate that you're here with us this morning. And if you're joining us by live stream, welcome. We're so glad to have you also. Let us know where you're joining us from. Now here in the sanctuary, in the bulletin, there is a perforated section, and that's for the opportunity of prayer. If there's a joy or concern you would like to write during the service before the offering, and you can fold it over, tear it off, fold it over, place it in the offering plate, and we can share those together later in the service. Your prayers are important to us also if you're live streaming with us. We invite you, if there's a joy or concern you would like shared this morning, take a moment, contact our media people. They'll write it down for you, and they'll be placed with the ones we gather here in the sanctuary. Then we might share them all together later in the service. And at the end of each pew here in the sanctuary, there's a friendship register. If it's closest to you, would you take the time, pick it up, and fill it out completely, then pass it to the person next to you in the pew. Let it get all the way down to the other end, and then make sure you send it back so you might have the chance to see the names of those who are worshiping with you this morning. But right now, I need all the boys and girls with me up here. I want something to show you that I've got today that you're going to see more of 
next Sunday. Oh, no. Oh, here comes my, here comes my, oh, here she's coming. Oh, oh, good to see you. How are you? I'm so glad you're here today. Good morning, good morning. How are you? Hi. And Matt. Here comes Matt. Here comes Adam. Awesome. Here. Hey, good to see you. How are you? <laughs> oh, here, and here comes Scout. Well, next Sunday is Easter. I'm, I'm excited about it. Now, I'm so excited because the Easter bunny uh, puts all the presents under the tree. And when you get up in the... Wait, that's not right. Easter bunny, there's a pot of gold at the end of the... No, no, no. <laughs> You, nice hearts and chocolate, and you give them to the... No. What happens on Easter Sunday? You get a box or a, a basket, and you get to put eggs in it. Well, we're going to have one of the world's greatest Easter egg hunts following service next week during the fellowship time, and I brought one of the already filled eggs. I'm not going to tell you what's in here. But... Not only are there amazing, wonderful eggs of all sorts of colors that are going to be uh, outside afterwards, you can run around and find them, but four or five of them are gold. And in there, there is a very special thing that the people who find those will have an even more special treat and surprise when they open up. So it's in here. But... Easter, you're hearing me talk about Jesus walking into Jerusalem, actually rides a donkey in Jerusalem. And this week is exciting, but there's some, some stories that aren't so exciting. Jesus gets in trouble, and, and on Good Friday, they nail him on a cross. And, and, but on Easter Sunday, he, he comes forth from the grave. But in all those stories in the Bible, not one time do they talk about eggs. Why did eggs get in our Easter celebration? Well, it's a great metaphor. It's a great understanding about the, oh, the tomb, right? The tomb breaks open and Jesus comes out, new life, and an egg cracks open and out comes a baby chick, right? New life. That's how the egg got to be used for that because, yeah, you can read a lot in the Bible about Easter. You're not going to come across an egg story. Hmm. But it's a great idea to remember about how Jesus breaks forth out of the tomb. But we're not there yet. I just wanted to bring this to you to, remem to remind you that this egg is what we're going to celebrate next week. So today is about a parade. Thank you for marching with me. That was awesome. We had almost every aisle with people in it. Jesus had a parade. What's your best, what, what do you like best about parades? Mm. Anyone like the horses? I like the horses. The music. That's a great, that's a great thing. Who likes the candy gets thrown at you? That, yeah, I thought that would bring it. Uh, oh, yeah, the candy gets thrown. I love the horses, but I was in marching band. You always want to be in front of the horses in the marching band. We won't get into why. Right? Oh, parades are great. Who doesn't love a parade? And today, we are the parade. We get to be the people who gather and walk in with Jesus. It says that they, they showered him and he and his, his followers. It wasn't just the disciples, those 12 guys and Jesus. It was the whole crowd as they passed by. Everybody joined the parade as they came into the city. And we can join the parade of Jesus' followers. Probably not going to see Jesus on a donkey today, but we can certainly join what Jesus does. That's loving others, right? That's doing the right thing when it's hard to. Oh, there's so much we can do to be part of the parade of what Jesus does. Jesus' ministry is a parade of love and kindness. And we join in right behind Jesus because Jesus says, come follow me, right? So I want you to know, take your palm home, Put it somewhere and let it be something to remind you until oh, it gets all dried out. Then you can get rid of it. But what a great way to celebrate today. Uh, we're gonna, every time we're singing, we're going to be waving palms today. So when you get your, your rhythm instrument, it's going to be get a one-handed rhythm instrument so you can wave. And that's gonna be, I'm going to be excited to watch you all try to do that. That'll be nice. All right. Grab the hand of the person next to you and we'll 
Share in a prayer together. You'll read after me. Here you go. Good morning, God. Good morning, God. Thanks for today. Thanks for today. Thanks for the parade. Thanks for the parade. A parade of love and kindness. A parade of love and kindness. That we can join in. That we can join in. Help me keep your parade going. Help me keep your parade going. Every day. Every day. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys have a great day. Good to see you. As they go back to their seats, um, we have a video to remind us about what Palm Sunday is all about. Have you seen this? This is hilarious. Hey, Tommy and Eddie here to talk to you about something really great, Palm Sunday. Yeah, that's the Sunday that we paint our palms purple to commemorate King Saul talking to that palm reader lady, and then we wave him in the air. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's yes, not. Yes, it is. No. What Bible do you read? Palm Sunday commemorates the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Now picture this. Jesus rode in on a donkey while the crowds put their cloaks and palm branches all over the ground, shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. That's what I said. That's what I meant. Okay, now picture this. Jesus' popularity was going viral. I mean, he just raised Lazarus from the dead in the same community just a few days earlier. Wait, post-dead Lazarus was maybe at the very first Palm Sunday? Yeah, probably. That's so cool. I bet if he was there, he was probably like, And you're a thriller, thriller, Jesus. You raised me from the dead when you said, Get up, get up, get up, ooh! <laughs> Now, to complete all of this, Jesus needed a donkey. Now, you'd think that a king or a prince would ride in on a horse, but not Jesus. He knew the message that he wanted to send. You see, a donkey represents peace. Anybody riding a donkey represented peaceful intentions. Yeah, it says right here in Matthew 21, it says that Jesus sent two of his disciples to get him a donkey. Yeah. Hey, I wonder which two he sent. Mm, maybe Thomas. I doubt it. I bet he sent Andrew. Andrew would totally do that, and probably... Tony. I bet he said Andrew and Tony. Tony's not a disciple. Oh, sorry. Tony is. <laughs> Still not a disciple. What translation of the Bible do you read? Jesus <laughs> needed a donkey, so he asked two disciples to go get him a donkey. He told them they would find one in town, tied there next to a colt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he says, untie them and bring them to me. And if somebody asks you about it, you tell them the Lord needs them? Jeez. Yeah. What? Well, Jesus told his disciples to go steal a donkey for him. What Bible do you read? It doesn't say that at all. I can't figure this out. I mean, Jesus, he changed water into wine. Cool. He fed the 4,000. He fed right? the 5,000. What? He fed the 5,000. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Not the fourth. It's the 5,000. We're splitting hairs. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus fed a large group of people. And that's cool. He, he healed people with leprosy. He raises Lazarus from the dead, and then boom, he's like, hey guys, go steal me a donkey. I'm just saying, I don't think that's very WWJD. The significance of Jesus riding on a donkey, which he did not steal, was to fulfill the prophecy that is found in Zechariah 9.9. Yeah, but... The and the king, riding in on a lowly donkey with his way paved with palm branches, the palm branches symbolize triumph or victory. The what? The palm branches. The bra I palm thought, branches, Palm Sunday. I thought it was the palm. They should call it Branch Sunday because that's confusing. We all have palms with us all the time. I just I feel bad. I, I'm sorry, Palm Sunday. <laughs> palm Sunday is a time for us to prepare our hearts for the agony of his passion and the joy of his resurrection. So this week, let's cover the road to the cross with our hearts, our souls, and our minds as we reflect on the final week of Jesus' life. And let's celebrate in anticipation the return of the King of Kings. Our first reading is from the book of Psalms, chapter 118, verses 1 and 2, and 19 through 29. 
O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal possession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Our second reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taken the form of a slave, assuming human likeness, and being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name given to Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father.
an invitation to respond to the good news of God through Jesus Christ. We hear it in song, we hear it in scripture, we hear it in word. This is the opportunity to give ourselves fully to God. We begin that with something called the noisy offering, and we invite the children to go get some pails and pick those up, and they'll move through us. If you have any loose change, you can plunk it in their pail, and they'll put it in their bowl. And we'll move right from that into the offering of our lives and ourselves to God. I got it in, I got it in.
して。Let us join together in our prayer of dedication this morning. O oh God of wisdom and grace, you open our eyes to the truth of your love. You free our tongues to proclaim your good news. We sing Hosanna in the highest. Christ has entered our lives and we respond, offering ourselves all we have and all we are to the coming of Jesus the Christ. Accept now these gifts, these tithes, these offerings as our garlands of celebration and joy. May our lives be a daily expression of following you and your ways. Blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Alleluia. Amen. While we're standing, let's share together in our hymn of thanksgiving. If you haven't had a chance to pick up one of the instruments, they're right here. We sing this one a lot, so you all, we all know this. <laughs> Blessed be your name. Please be seated. I know our Discovery Zone guide is here. There is an amazing promise globe. Or if you didn't get your chance to make your celebration hat, that's back there too. If you want to follow our guides, those sixth grade and under, they've got a lesson about palm branches. They've got coloring pages and crafts to do. I invite us, 
into a time of prayer. To simply lift up these joys and concerns. We'll begin in silence and then a pastoral prayer, the Lord's Prayer and a prayer response. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We bow our hearts before you in celebration and awe. We rejoice as you enter the gates, as you come to this moment to define what, what power truly is against the powers that be. Lord, God of the cosmos and Lord of our hearts, Spirit that moves and breathes through us, that sustains us and leads us into the new day. Lord, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. I invite us to lift up these joys and concerns. The tradition here is after each one's read, I'll simply say, Lord, in your mercy, or Lord, in praise and celebration. And the room responds, hear our prayer. Let us lift these to God. Loving God, we come to you with hearts full and hearts in need of you. Lord, we thank you that you hear each prayer lifted. Loving God, prayers for a very good friend that has many medical issues and is now diagnosed with shingles. Loving God, we lift this friend to you, thankful for the friend who writes the prayer. Shingles, shingles hurt. On top of other things, Lord, all the other medical issues. Be a balm of healing and a presence of love and power. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, please provide a prayer for Bob Beaver, who is undergoing surgery to help alleviate his Parkinson's syndrome. Loving God, we lift Bob to you. May he and each of these be aware of the love and prayers that surround him. May he sense your presence and power. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, prayers for a son, Corey, who hurt his back at work. He's had three surgeries off work. Lord, without compensation and for the needs, Lord, we lift Corey to you. May he know you are present with him through the surgeries. Lord, thanks for those who who have the skills that you've given them for them. We pray for results. We pray for healing. We pray for met need. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, a live stream prayer from the Smiths. They're watching us now. Prayers for Kelly's health. Uh, Lord, as he uh, recovers from, from the illness, that uh, he, is, he is quickly healed. And prayers of celebration for Trinity's doctor appointment that went well last week. Loving God, thank you for the Smiths. Remind them of the love and prayers that hold them. Remind them of you, that you are present, that you're healing is touching their lives even now. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, prayers for Denise, a daughter in treatment for drugs. Lord, we lift Denise to you. Be with her. May she find a resource of strength in you. May she discover love and support system surrounding her. Give her the courage and strength and perseverance to overcome. Lord, we lift Denise to you. 
Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, a prayer is lifted for a longtime friend, Sarah, who is dealing with a debilitating health issue. Lord, we lift Sarah to you. Be a healing balm. May she know of the prayers lifted for her. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, a prayer is lifted for a mom with a condition. Lord, we, we lift this mom to you, dealing with the health issue she has. Lord, we cover her in prayer and hold her in our hearts. And for all of us gathered here, Lord, we are in need of healing too. Come, mend and restore us. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us share in the prayer our Lord taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh Lord. Our gospel reading today comes from the gospel of Mark. Mark, the 11th chapter, the first 11 verses, and of course, this is the Palm Sunday story. I invite you to read aloud with me, and where it's, uh, read along, and where it's underlined, read aloud with me. Now, when they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, now Jesus sent two of the disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you, and immediately, as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and Jesus sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who were followed were, were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. And then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything and saw it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Growing up, Palm Sunday was all about the kids gathering outside the sanctuary and handing out these palms. And then as we sang the opening hymn, we were paraded about and uh, found our moms and dads, and, and that was the parade. And that's really great when you're two, three, or four, but when you're fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, I think they're handing this to us because the adults don't want to do it. When the adults won't want to do something, let's have the kids do it. That always falls to them, and it'll be so cute. That's why I celebrate our morning together. 
that it was the crowd, it was each and all, it was all those from every age and from every corner of the community that had gathered to see the king riding in. The Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one is coming. This is the day we've been waiting for it. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How many times do we use Hosanna besides Palm Sunday? Probably not a whole lot. But it's a great word. It's a great word. It's a blend of, of two different Hebrew words, most scholars think. Yasha, which means to save or to deliver. And na, meaning to beseech or to pray. And so they were saying, deliver us, rescue us, save us, Hosanna. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord for this reason, to come and to save us. We beseech you to deliver us. Come rescue, come save. Some time ago, I was asked to speak to a group of junior high kids and we were talking about Palm Sunday, and I, I told them about this. And what does Jesus save you from? And uh, what, what, what God save you from? And one of the kids quickly piped up, hell, because I think that's what the pastor wants to hear. That, it's got to be the answer. That's one of those pastor questions. Hell, it must be hell. Often in children's moments, there was a church I served some years ago where this very intelligent young little boy at two, three years of age, he, he now works for MIT, I think. He's in, uh, in Washington. He's an incredibly sex successful young man. But he became bored, and he, we was, I would start, good morning, oh, it's good to be here. I have a question for you. And you go, Jesus. <laughs> it's always Jesus. It's Jesus, Pastor Jim. I had to change my questions. In the same way, that little boy's hell. I said, well, good answer. We have some, some things to back us up on that. But, you know, I asked them, if God was really on the ball, what would God save you from? And then the answers got interesting. Very interesting. One child said, from the math test this Friday I'm not ready for. Another child said, from my parents' expectations. Another child said, shyly, fears. I want God to save me from my fears. What would we honestly say to God? Save me from my anger. Save me from my addiction. Save me from the violence in my household saved me from. Now we understand this. Jesus, come, Hosanna, come, rescue us. Now they mostly meant rescue us from the Romans because many scholars believe that on the same day Jesus rode in from the east on a donkey, they believe that was timed intentionally because the Roman legion from Rome with Pontius Pilate was entering Jerusalem from the west. What a statement of the kingdom of God, if that's true. That on this day, the crowd flocked to the one they sought saving. Come, save us, Hosanna, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Not in the name of Rome, not in the name of powers that oppress, but in powers that liberate, that save us, that rescue us. And not on a horse, a war horse, but on a donkey. That's prophetically mentioned in the Old Testament. Donkeys are the animal of a savior. Donkeys are the one the anointed walks, uh, rides in on. It was a defiant parade. It was in the very face of Rome. They entered the gate they broke into the place, the seat of political power, the seat of economic power with the gospel. They broke in with the good news. They broke in with the word that says God is greater, that truth has more power. And it ain't on a horse. It's not the one on a horse. It's the one on a donkey. 
That's the power we speak of. That's the power we name on Palm Sunday as we wave our branch and not some army with spears walking alongside and behind the horse, but this is a movement. A movement catches fire. Armies are drafted. Movements are engaged by those whose hearts open up to the truth of that thing which is coming alive within them. The church is a movement I've often said the more the church can lose itself as an institution and come alive as a movement, the more we live into what Jesus started in the first place. Not an army of coercion that we invite people at at spear point, but we envelop people in open arms and gather them unto ourselves to be part of it. I love Red Rover. That's a great game. Um... Because everybody wins, right? If they can't break your arm, you got to join. And pretty soon there's just one team. It's the winning team. That's the understanding of the kingdom of God. That's the understanding of the church that we might all invite others to step into this movement, this moment of grace, this call towards love and justice. Celebration, not fear. Joy, not intimidation. Liberation, not oppression. That's the thumbprint of what God does on this day. That's what we celebrate today. And it's a subversive gospel in the face of that power and wealth economy used to to push people down, not economy in a way to share. Remember, as the church begins in just weeks from this Sunday, right? Pentecost is coming. We're going to have Palm Sunday, then we're going to move through Holy Week, ending with Easter, and then the Holy Spirit comes on Pentecost. In the face of that, in the face of that, wealth, that church begins by, as we hear in the second chapter of Acts, everybody pooled their resources and gave to any who had need. That's how they got things done in the early church. Identified with the least of these. That's this, that's this gospel. Not as a mighty warrior on the horse, but as one who is vulnerable and refuses to base the movement on violence and threat and fear, but on hope and joy and faith and love. That's what it means to walk into the kingdom of God, to be a part of the movement of grace of what God is doing. Not as one who lords over others, but a Lord who within days will be washing the feet of his closest friends. And check the story out. While Judas doesn't make it all the way through the dinner, Jesus washes his feet. I encourage you this week to walk the journey. Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday are at 6.30 this year. Monday, Thursday is a communion experience. Good Friday is a tenebrae service. I encourage and invite you to be at those because you can't just go from the parade to the resurrection party because a faith like that won't last when the troubles come. A faith like that won't last at the loss of a loved one. A faith like that won't last when you lose the farm. A faith like that struggles to move through the tragedy of life. So do come. Come and walk this week together. Because we're headed in a way of grace. We're going forward with the Lord as we see in those moments who touches and heals, who shares the good news, defying the powers, living in grace as God brings the justice, as God brings the truth, as God reveals what it means to be a follower of God. Sin and evil are named and resisted this week. Oh, but this is good news. But not by the means nor the pattern of evil they represent. There's a new way. We can address those in ways of liberation. We can address those in ways of love and sharing and community and restoring. Not by making sure they get theirs. But invite them into our moment because of a love that can't be broken 
A love isn't breakable. Love hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Because we bear a witness of abundant life, an abundant and unconditional love so unlimited that it cannot be overcome. It cannot be silenced. Did you hear it in the song? Let the rocks cry out. Let the mountains shout. This is a love and a grace and a Savior so great, so great, that in in the letter to Rome, Paul writes to this struggling church, feeling the oppression of literally Rome on its neck, for I am convinced that not one thing can overcome this. And he puts that list together. Not one thing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let the rocks cry out. Let our lives shout. May we wave our lives like palms. May we display our love like cloaks. And may we lay them so that Jesus might have a path into this community through even us. Amen. I invite us to stand for our closing hymn of glory, loud and honor. Amen. Let us join together in our benediction. May God grant you grace to follow in faith where Christ has led the way. May you know the hope in the midst of doubts. May your journey this week lead you ever closer to the heart of God. Amen.